Welcome to today's video. This time we have Alex Imes here. He recently conducted an exciting field experiment on the topic of discrimination. Alex, why don't you start with introducing yourself? Uh, my name is Alex Simas. I'm an assistant professor at Carnegie Mellon University in the Department of Social and Decision Sciences. Uh, broadly speaking, I study behavioral economics, and today I'm going to be presenting a paper on the dynamics of discrimination, where we have a theoretical model and we match that with uh, evidence from the field experiment. This sounds interesting. So from your paper, I know you conducted this experiment on an online platform. Could you explain a bit more in detail what you did there? Um, so basically what the platform allows you to do is ch take accounts and assign usernames to these accounts. So you typically as a, as a user on the site, you log on and you can choose whatever name you want. If I'm Alex, I would take the name Alex, for example, and start posting questions and answers. So what we did as part of the experiment was exogenously assign some accounts to have male, uh, male usernames and other accounts to have female usernames. And this basically allowed us to, have to, allowed us to do causal inference on whether the perceived gender of a person posting content on the site has an effect on the community's response to that content. Specifically, we took uh, some accounts, half of our accounts, and gave them female usernames, and half of the, our accounts, we gave them male usernames. And then we generated content for the actual platform. We posted, uh, posted the content under male or female usernames and saw what the community's response was. And that's how we uh, study discrimination, given very similar content, because it was randomly assigned to these, uh, to these accounts, we can see whether the community favored or was more likely to upvote, downvote, comment on content that was posted to a, uh, to a male account versus a female account. Okay, so you could exogenously vary gender by assigning either male or female sounding usernames to these accounts. So what did you find? Was there gender-based discrimination? What we found was quite shocking for these new accounts. Specifically on questions, what we found is that once we generated questions, a question assigned to a female account holder got about three-fourths or two-thirds as many upvotes or reputation points earned on this platform as a very similar question assigned to a male account. Uh, so there was significant gender discrimination for these initial accounts, but we found absolutely no di gender discrimination on answers. In fact, there was just nothing there. I see. So you find discrimination against female-sounding usernames, but you only find this discrimination if these usernames post questions. You don't find discrimination if these usernames post answers. What can we learn from this pattern? So discrimination as it's studied in the social sciences, particularly economics, it can be thought of as either belief-based or preference-based. Belief-based discrimination basically means that, look, I have nothing necessarily against members of particular groups, but I'm uncertain about the quality of a post or the quality of a product. And I believe that on average, certain groups are less able to produce high quality products or high quality posts. And therefore, because of this uncertainty, I discriminate. What that means is that if the degree of uncertainty over quality decreases, once I can perfectly observe quality, well, discrimination should go away. I no longer have to think about whether this is a man or a woman uh, who's actually producing this product. On the other hand, discrimination could be preference-based or taste-based, as, uh, as it's defined in economics. Particularly, I might have something actually against members of a particular group. I get less utility, I get less pleasure buying something from a woman than from a man, for whatever reason. Maybe I want to, uh, to hurt them in the marketplace or I don't want to see them rise up uh, to a certain level. And preference-based and uh, belief-based discrimination have, depending on what it is, they, these have vastly different policy implications. So that's why we compared answers and questions. The degree of uncertainty uh, around the, how you should judge a question is just much higher. On the actual platform, it says, why would you, how should you evaluate questions? Well, you should, is it interesting? Is it important? How much time did the user spend uh, writing it? There's a lot of uncertainty in how you should judge this. So when you're thinking about it, well, you know, I should rely on my group level beliefs and things like that. Whereas for an answer, is it right or is it wrong? 
it's a lot simpler to figure out whether how you should evaluate it. So when you read an answer, you don't really need to rely as much on group level beliefs uh, in terms of evaluating. You could just read it and say, is this right or is this wrong? So that's how we compared discrimination on answers versus questions to try to get at what caused the discrimination we saw in questions. And what we found is again that we we didn't find any discrimination on answers, which points to the discrimination on questions being driven by beliefs rather than on preferences. If I remember correctly, you did not just create new user accounts. You also had a set of experienced user accounts with more reputation and assigned male or female sounding usernames to, to it. Could you explain what exactly you did there and why did you do it? So the other thing that we varied as part of the experiment is the actual um, seniority of the uh, account holders. Particularly on this platform, you could have no reputation or you can have like brand new accounts, which is what I talked about earlier, or you can have kind of more senior accounts, which have gotten rep high reputation as part of being on this platform, receiving positive evaluations on prior posts and achieving this high reputation level. And high reputation on this platform is very important for the users. Particularly, it allows them to edit other people's posts, it allows them to comment, it also allows them to basically use this reputation as currency. So if I have a question that I really want answered, I can take some of my reputation, I can post it on the, on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the question, and whoever answers it gets my reputation points. So it's basically like money. So reputation is important. And getting there means that you were good in the past, you were generating high quality posts in the past. So what we were interested in was uh, looking at how the dynamics of discrimination evolve. Uh, this has uh, not been studied in the past. Basically, discrimination has largely been studied in static settings, where you basically have one slice of the data. But the issue is that it's really hard to identify the cause of discrimination when you have only one slice. Turns out, when you look at the dynamic data, this allows you to identify what's actually the underlying cause of discrimination. So what we did was we took half of our questions and actually built them up. We built up their reputation on the platform in order for this half of the questions to be uh, these high reputation questions, and then we, uh, high reputation accounts, and then we posted questions to these accounts. And therefore, we were able to compare how does seniority of the account affect discrimination on the, in the setting. So how discrimination change once people build up experience and reputation seems crucial. Could you elaborate a bit more on these dynamics and why they're that important? So the dynamics allow you to even more precisely identify the underlying uh, cause of discrimination. Particularly, depending on what is causing discrimination at this initial stage, discrimination should evolve very differently. Specifically, let's say discrimination was preference-based. Well, if I do not like to reward women, I do not like to reward women when they're high reputation women or they're low reputation women. It shouldn't really matter that much. We shouldn't really see any differences between high and low reputation accounts. But if the discrimination is belief-based, well, now I have more information about this poster. Specifically, if it's a high reputation poster, I know that, they're, you know, that they've generated high quality uh, content in the past. And if I believe that there is actually initial discrimination against women on this platform, which is what we found, the dynamic pattern should be predictably very different. Specifically, because I now see that this, uh, this woman, uh, this female user, actually was able to generate high quality posts and make it past these higher thresholds, make it past the initial discrimination, in order to get this high reputation, well, discrimination should get smaller and smaller and potentially even reverse. And this reversal is very important in order to identify whether this belief-based discrimination is driven by correct beliefs or incorrect beliefs, specifically whether the users on this platform actually are discriminating in a uh, statistical manner or whether they're discriminating and they're wrong. Okay, so what did you observe regarding the dynamic patterns? Yeah, so we found some uh, really interesting dynamics uh, in, in how discrimination evolves there. Specifically, we actually found that the, uh, the high reputation accounts, posts to female high reputation accounts were actually favored relative to posts to, uh, to high reputation male accounts. So the direction of initial discrimination actually reversed at these high reputation levels. So what can we make out of this result? How can we use it to fight discrimination? 
So in the paper, we have this field experiment that I've been discussing. But the other uh, part of the paper, in fact, the, the first part of the paper, is uh, a theoretical model of how you can use dynamic data, such as the one we collected in the experiment, to identify whether discrimination is preference-based, belief-based, or belief-based with bias, beliefs that are incorrect. Specifically, we show that uh, we have a result in the paper that if you observe this sort of dynamic reversal, you can actually say that discrimination is belief-based and people are wrong. And this has very uh, important implications for the sort of policies that you would want to enact and the sort of policies that you would be able to enact in the first place in order to, to, to mitigate discrimination. Particularly, in economics, um, there's this notion that discrimination can be efficient, which is a very in some ways strange way to talk about discrimination. But economists agree with everybody, all the other social scientists when discrimination is driven by biased beliefs. Particularly, if there's bias, you want to correct it. It's an unambiguous policy implication that if you have bias in the setting, then you would want to basically take, take steps in order to mitigate it. And because it's belief-based rather than preference-based, things like informational interventions or ways to um, allow users to get some sort of capital before revealing their uh, before really revealing their names is theoretically uh, an effective way to mitigate discrimination in the setting. If, on the other hand, discrimination was preference-based, then it would be much harder to solve this issue. So, uh, for example, giving users feedback uh, or basically summary statistics of how different groups perform on this site. So, for example, we were able to download the data and we saw that men and women actually perform very similarly as far as the, sort of qu uh, the, the quality of the content that they were posting. This could potentially correct beliefs and uh, lead to discrimination going away. Uh, so these sorts of interventions, uh, figuring out whether these, uh, whether it's belief-based or preference-based, allows these sort of interventions to have an effect uh, and to potentially mitigate discrimination on the platform. And again, because beliefs are wrong, uh, there's, there's a lot of justification to, to do that. This was very informative. Thank you, Alex, for sharing your insights. You're very welcome. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you.